It's a new year and a chance for a brand new you. But is the way that New Year's resolutions are presented to us a prohibitive, restrictive, unfulfillable agenda that turns us more and more into passive slave folk and less and less into awakened citizens. Let's have a look at the news. Well, as you know, 2021 is here, which means many of you are starting those New Year's resolutions. New Year's Day means New Year's resolutions are on the forefront of many Siouxlanders' minds. It's the start of the new year, and that means people are busy making their New Year's resolutions. It's interesting to watch the banalization of something as important of change, of awakening. Of course, the calendar is a bit of an invention, although it is to some degree marked on real cosmic and global shifts. You know, there's been a solstice, the days are getting longer. There's a sense around the time of festivities, of change, of endings, particularly uh, after a year such as 2020, where people are really reinvigorated by the possibility of a new start. But is this going to be a new start or is it more of the same? And is the way that this possibility of change on a personal, let's face it, spiritual level, because self-improvement is a spiritual endeavour, the way is the way it's presented in its sense, a kind of dumb commodification of something that's important and necessary. New year, new resolutions. New year means new you. <laughs> it doesn't mean new you. It just means that zero has turned to a one. And even that don't mean anything, does it, in limitless space? I mean, you start to realise that even the most important laws of physics are kind of local customs that are not applicable on the subparticular scale or the absolute macro scale. So I don't see how I can become a new you just by a zero change into a one. And just like that, yeah. it's 2021. As we bring in the new year, many of you have resolutions that will be long gone a month from now. I also sort of can't believe that they bothered to do all this stuff. I didn't send many text messages this year. I didn't do my normal kind of happy new year. I think I probably only said happy Christmas about 10 times. I couldn't get into it. I can't believe that Times Square and like London did all fireworks and everything. They did though, didn't they? They did bother to do fireworks. How can we carry on with these dumb festivities, with these mad deracinated rituals that no longer have any element of sacredness in them, that are no longer an acknowledgement of some kind of connection, of shared change, of shared community and shared culture? How can you keep doing them when everything's gone so mad, when the world is looking so mad, when there's so much uncertainty, when we're unsure of how these matters are going to resolve, where there's no continuity, there's not going to be any more lockdowns, there's another lockdown, everything's going to be okay when this new political party gets elected, it's going to be the same when the new political party is elected. How can you have mad, glaring graphics in brightly lit, pixelated squares when it feels like there's a deep, deep problem that really needs to be addressed, whether that's on a personal level or on a social level. There's real things that need to be addressed and changed, and it's being, as I say, banalised into, would you like to lose a few pounds? Boop, boop. <laughs> serious stuff to consider. It's January 1st and that means New Year's resolutions are underway and we want to help you make sure they stick this year. We've become inured to the fatic language that's used to address us. We know that a news item isn't going to help us. We're going to make sure that your New Year's resolutions stick this year. Does anyone in the world sit and watch sincerely and think this will make a difference? This will help me. I suppose what this shows is that there is the spectacle of culture and there is the reality of life. That all of the concepts, even the ones as deep as nation, as religion, are starting to feel like these odd, floating, meaningless memes that don't relate to the integral experience of being. It's the first Monday of the new year, and WalletHub conducted a survey to see what types of resolutions Americans made for 2021. Play called WalletHub. If you want to understand <laughs> the true nature of reality, go over a wallet hub. Even hearing their name doesn't <laughs> fire up a load of questions in my mind about what their true agenda might be. Who is making the resolutions in 2021? The youngest, 91%, nearly 92% of folks in Generation Z are making New Year's resolutions. Watch how this moves as you go through the age categories. With millennials, it's still very high. With Gen X, it's high, but now you're down mm -hmm. to about three and four. With baby boomers, now you're down to about 60%. And with the silent generation, the oldest group in here. It's interesting to watch this ladder of indifference that people are clambering down. I think this year, I'm gonna try and get me some washboard abs. Oh, I suppose I should give up smoking. I might pick off that layer of dead skin on my back. 
onion. By the time you get to the side of the gym, oh, fuck you. Almost 60% of Americans say they want to be healthier this year. The other thing that it does, of course, is that famous trick our culture plays of rendering it the job of the individual to make changes that are taking place in a cultural context that's kind of insurmountable. The reason that 60% of people want to be healthier is because we've got terrible diets. The reason we've got terrible diets is because certain foods are easy to produce and heavily promoted and sold to us even though really they should be illegal. Delicious food. The top resolution year after year, exercising more and losing weight. Yeah, well, we've all heard that term, pandemic pounds. <laughs> the first time I've ever heard pandemic pounds. 51% of Americans have shedding some pounds on their minds. Pound shedding is because of the inescapable pressure to be more beautiful and better looking. It's weird because it, when I do like videos like this, I talk about it in the abstract, but I really like like feel it myself. Every time Cristiano Ronaldo peels off his shirt after scoring a goal, I just solemnly look down at <laughs> my own pitiful lap. What kind of man are you? When did you last score for Juventus? When are you going to do something about that spare tire? You idiot! Do a resolution! Every year people wonder if it's healthy to hold yourself to a New Year's resolution. My resolution is to eat something green every day. Bogies. First day of the year and William Chen is in this Midtown supermarket with two-year-old daughter Kelly buying healthy food. His resolutions eat well and exercise. I'm gonna do a diet with my girlfriends. Cooking. Why are we doing the kind of news item that we do any other year when it's clear that we're at some point of great reckoning, reflection and change where there are serious things to consider. The important truth is that you can radically improve your life by changing what you believe, but it's not a simple thing. There is some complexity to it. Making meaningful change to the way you drink, use drugs, smoke, eat, exercise, treat the people that you love. These things require a kind of, hmm, I would say, a deep communing with who you actually are, who you really are. A process to honour the invisible world within you that is harder to track. This can't be achieved simply by scratching out a few trite objectives on the back of an envelope or eating a green thing every day. This again is how our culture takes from us something like our ability to envisage and create new realities from our imagination and sells it back to us as some ordinary, slightly tiresome, doomed to fail cultural exercise. Well, if you fail to keep your resolutions this year, where you live, could be your excuse. We all know they often begin strong and wane over time, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think actually the subtle implication of it again, and you might think I'm going a bit too deep here, is that your life is your fault, your problems are your fault, your failings are your fault, the reason you're overweight or not good enough or not pretty enough, strong enough, male enough, female enough, whatever enough, is due to some inner failing rather than a inevitable effect of living in a culture that sees everything as a commodity that has become entirely disconnected from sacredness and can only create a kind of grim treadmill towards sort of inertia and failure. Even though it seems like Hyde, I think it's presenting a version of reality that's rather toxic. U.S. News and World Report says 80% of resolutions fail by the second week <laughs> of February. Oh, that's a pretty dismal prospect. Right. Oh, 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 your life is falling apart. Television's sort of glamour, slickness and beauty belies the fact that the reality it's reporting on is kind of tragic. And when they do a, like real life vox pop and you see the people in the store or the people on the street, then it's it, it, you are inevitably confronted with the reality that's being jokingly reported on here is in fact rather bleak and tragic. New Year's resolutions is just, let's face it, a classic news item. When they're scheduling their content, they're saying, right, let's do this thing about Christmas, let's do this thing about Black Friday, let's do this thing about New Year's resolutions and how they fail. It's like a sort of a standardised piece of news content. But what that shows you is that there's a sort of a thread of consciousness that runs through reporting that's kind of, what do I want to say, sort of dumb and vacant. The other thing, of course, about New Year's resolutions 
is that it's presented to you as something that can easily be determined. Like the reason that it might have failed by February is because it's a complex thing to alter the way that you behave and the way that you act. I speak from the perspective of a person in recovery who's been addicted to like a sort of a litany of things that I scarce need to list again here, but that it required a really focused, conscious decision a process of surrender, continuing support from a group of like-minded people, faith in a higher purpose, a commitment to helping others. is not done just by, I don't think I'll drink again in 2021 or take drugs again. Like it's undertaken with um, a serious spiritual process. And I suppose that's what's difficult about all this. The vacant space that all this crap is occupying would be better uh, held by some genuine sense of purpose and meaning and spirituality, something that we're genuinely lacking. I don't mean spirituality in a prescriptive monotheistic sense, neither in an airy fairy new age sense. I mean a genuine connection to who you are and the fact that this is your life, this is it, this is your life that will end. Do you feel like you're actually even here? Are you actually present in your life and experiencing it rather than as a sort of a series of jobs and tasks and even resolutions? Adam Curtis once said it's like our technocratic culture is trying to turn our role in uh, just the management of ourselves. Give it food, give it exercise, put one of them little watches on it so I can count how many steps I've done and what my heartbeat rate is or whatever. As many embark on a new year and get outside, excitement is in the air. This attempt to turn our ability to control our own destiny, behavior and life into a three minute news item masks a deeper reality that we can have agency, not just on New Year's Eve or on New Year's Day or the weekend after it. I know a lot of people went, hold on a minute, it's New Year's Day, but it is also a Saturday. What trumps Saturday or New Year's Day? Let's wait to Monday to start this new diet. The fact is, is that we can create whatever kind of reality we want to create. All reality passes through the psyche of individual humans and the culture, and the job of a culture or a social system is to preserve the interests of the most dominant people within it. That's pretty bloody obvious to anyone. But the fact is, is that not just today, not just tomorrow, but when you want, you can choose to take your life in a different direction. I'm not saying that's an easy thing that can be blithely undertaken, but the truth is that reality is amorphous. Reality passes through human consciousness, both on an individual level, you could say, I want to live this kind of life. You could make the kind of deathbed decisions right now. You can live the kind of reality that you want to right now. Of course it's not easy. Of course you have familial, economic and social pressures. You have the trauma of your past, uh, the, the pain and suffering that have guided and moulded your reality. But the truth is that your reality can radically alter. I'm not saying that's solely your responsibility, far from it. I'm saying it's something that should be undertaken with a good deal of collaboration and support. But the thing that's being here banalized, commodified and sold back to you as some cheesy cheeky piece of content actually is a real thing. You can imagine new worlds, imagine a new life and then you can inhabit it. That is not a process that is in my experience undertaken without a great deal of pain and suffering because the resources for this new you are already within you. What Jung would call your unconscious, that there are deep forces within you that you can harvest and use. But when you unlock these forces, there is suffering, there is the death of the old self. So the good news is change is possible on a personal level and on a global level. The hard truth is that there is suffering involved in that process. But given reality currently looks the way that it does, what choice do we really have? Happy New Year!